What is up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. In this video, we are going to be discussing one of the many passive income options we have, not only leveraging our XRP, but our Flare, our Spark token as this network is coming live. And just to reassure anybody that's new to this channel that maybe feels that they're not tech savvy, that's okay. You don't have to be tech savvy to understand this. As this network goes live, as Flare Finance comes about, I'm gonna be learning right there with you. There's so many great resources out there. I'll be posting videos on what I'm doing and I hope it Help some of you. I know some of you um, have been in this game for five plus years. You're a little bit more experienced than me. That's great. I'm right there with you, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing to earn passive income leveraging my existing crypto holdings. Of course, some of you maybe stake your assets. Maybe it's Cardano or Algorand. Um, others may even lend your assets out on platforms or CeFi platforms like Nexo or BlockFi or Celsius. And that's completely fine. And maybe others do some yield farming and liquidity mining to earn a passive yield, although there that does come with certain risks. Well, the cool thing about this is there's absolutely no risk. And we're going to go through this. And for me, I like my money working for me. I run multiple businesses. I want to set and forget and keep working. I don't want to trade my time for money. I want my money to be working entirely for me where time is not a factor whatsoever. So let's kick things off and I also wanna say happy birthday to XRP and then we'll get through the information. So right here guys, David Schwartz pointing this out and this is happy birthday to XRP and actually I wanted to thank Bank XRP for bringing this to my attention again this year. Happy birthday on June 2nd, 2012, Arthur Brito, essentially one of the creators of the XRP ledger, created 100 billion XRP at that time called XNS. So almost 10 years now, can't believe it. We have David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, pointing this out. Arthur's code that created the 100 billion XRP, then called XNS, on June 2nd, 2012, the birth dates of XRP. This shows a code push, but was obviously used. GitHub history that shows how many times we contributed and executed every single day. And please remember, Arthur Brito is still active, guys. Um, and I cannot believe how eerie is it and how strange is it that he's never once mentioned in the SEC documents. He's essentially the founder of PolySign and they just did a huge strategic deal with Cohen Investments. And of course, the former retired vice chairman of BNY, Bank of New York, is Tim Keeney, who is responsible for custodying one fourth, 25% of all global institutional assets. He's on the board of PolySign with Jack McDonald, David Schwartz, um, Antoinette. Antoinette O'Gorman, who speaks at the International Monetary Fund, and people still don't think that XRP is meant to do big things behind the scenes. I don't get it, but teach their own, do your own research. So just wanted to say thank you, Bank XRP, for pointing this out. Also, pointing this out, here's another, another FTSO SP. This is FTSO.eu. Incredible. If you go to Coin Market Cap, the XRP market on Bitru has no volume on XRP. That is not good. This just shows that there's inaccurate APIs or essentially an Oracle problem and there's nepotism or what should I say, kind of like favoritism at play here as we know and well are well aware of CoinMarketCap's connections. If you go to CoinGecko though, Bitru is at the second spot for XRP volume. Cannot wait to see a real price based on solid data Flare Networks with the Decentralized Oracle. And this is exactly what these Flare Time Series Oracles do. Remember that Community Flare, subscribe to his channel. He even calls these the heartbeat of Flare Networks. Absolutely. So let's check this out for ourselves. We can see their screenshot. We can see Bitrue's in second place right here with the tether pair of over $500 million in volume on a 24-hour period on CoinGecko.com. But on CoinMarketCap, Bitru is nowhere to be seen. Pretty strange. Obviously, we can see Binance 900 million. Um, we know Binance bought Coin Market Cap too, by the way. Um, what was that last year? Maybe a year or two ago, for a couple hundred million dollars. And when that happened, that's when I knew in my gut that this market was meant for big things. We we're sitting even when we were sitting at a few hundred um, billion dollars in market cap. Well, we've soared to well above two trillion, and it's because I'm paying attention to these fundamentals. So, just wanted to show this, and I agree. You know, coin market cap should not be taken seriously, and this is another example of the Oracle problem. So, let's take a quick look. We can see market cap overall is almost at 1.7 trillion again, just kind of retracing. Um, relatively a green day for the market, so that's good to see. But Bitcoin's dominance is still just under 42 percent. Right here, you click XRP. We scroll down a dollar three today, nice, and then we can see there's no Bitru. And so we clicked XRP markets. You can see the volume. There's no Bitru. How eerie is that? Well, now let's go to CoinGecko. And what do we do? XRP, go to the markets. And you actually, when you come and click markets, you're actually going to click right here, sort from largest, you know, to smallest. And we can see Bitru is still in second place right here, just under Binance, 500 million plus in 24 hour volume. 
insane. And I encourage you guys to maybe go to like Coin Paprika and Live Coin Watch and other platforms to kind of compare this as well. Okay, so thank you, FTSO underscore EU, for pointing this out. Now, Happy birthday to XRP right here. So FTSO.UK, we have a few groups out here and I wanted to point this out. It's discussing passive income. This is not just some buzzword. We're trying to actually get people to participate in Flare Networks because first come, first serve. Those that are first served are first served. Those that actually do participate, whether it's delegating your vote or maybe trying to participate in Flare Finance, the yield, meaning the overall return, is going to be higher at first. Once everybody gets in on this a year or two years from now, the opportunity is going to not um, be gone, but it'll dwindle down just like anything. Just like the people that are first to stake you know, ETH um, 2.0 are going to get aggressive yields compared to three years down the road after they successfully migrate to proof of stake. So that's very, very important, guys. We want our money to be working for us. And there's a plethora of ways to generate passive income with Spark. This is just one example. You can create feedback loops and essentially have the money working for you automatically if you actually like built your own smart contracts and things like that. It gets very, very powerful. Um, shout out to Martin Volk as well. So Looking to boost your passive income? The Flare Network's FTSO Flare Time Series Oracle Vote Delegation is a way to increase your Spark holdings without the tokens ever leaving your custody. They stay in your wallet, guys. This is risk-free. And this is why I'm so comfortable talking about it on this channel. And this is what I'm going to be doing. So you're in complete control of your assets, your Spark. So follow us, and I encourage you guys to follow them, FTSO underscore UK. And let's take a quick look. And again, um, thank you for sharing this as well. And let's actually take a look at their page so we can see they have updated their glossary and all these terms in a variety of assets it's not just xrp it's a variety of assets even gala um and a few other assets that will be joined and be interoperable um ada initially but they're going to try to really ramp it up so it's legitimate and i can't wait for this so they have a glossary they have all these terms you guys can learn more about and a great website to refer to so right here flare time series oracle on flare networks this is a uk based platform we have the um, eu platform we have the australian based platform and we're going to go through all of these in the future once all these um the interest rates defined and see who offers the most aggressive return and maybe whose beliefs maybe align with mine because personally you can actually vote yourself as a spark holder you can vote but for me i'm lazy i want to you know keep focusing on building what i'm doing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be delegating my vote to one of these chosen sps signal providers okay so you can go to their website ftso.uk we'll go right here flare community voting made simple delegate your spark ftso vote and participate in the rewards risk-free voting again they never leave your wallet when using an ftso service that's something i really like their service will provide externally sourced dat data estimates to the flare network in a decentralized manner infrastructure we get it high performance cloud scalability etc so this is still in the works um we can kind of go through everything if you guys are curious read about the flare blog but just wanted to point one of the sps that i am looking at okay now <clears throat> Right here, shared by Tim Rowley and underscore AU. This is how I envision it will be to delegate delegate to an FTSO provider on Flare Networks. This is just a concept, full disclosure, guys. This does not represent the full functionality of Flare Networks, but I love this example, and thank you for the tag, Simon or Simone. Let's check this out. So right here, we have the Flare balance of 1,500 Flare. It shows the going rate for the Spark token at $1.25 currently. And now in this wallet, we see the assets. We have 1,500 Flare, and we also have 100 XRP. You can add some tokens, you have the home, you can send them, you can even earn them. So check this out and see how easy this is. Even if, you know, your grandma's doing this and she has a little XRP, she can figure this out. So let's check this out. So we're going to hit play. You can see your flare balance. You can see your XRP balance. We're going to click earn. And now you have Spark. You can either delegate that or you can even wrap your XRP so it's interoperable on other networks, aka flare networks. So let's click delegate because we can delegate our Spark. And now you can click the percentage that you want to delegate. Do you want to delegate all 100% of your 1500 tokens or do you want to maybe use half of them and use the other half for something else? And because you can stake your assets as well. Um, and then which provider do you want to choose out of these FTSO providers? So check this out. You can click this down and you can pick one of them. And so here's the three that I've been looking at. If you guys have any more, let me know. This is very exciting. So you can go through these depending on maybe the rate they're offering, things like that. Depends what you value when you delegate your vote. So they're going to pick FTSO AU. They're going to click 100% and then click delegate. 
and voila you can see right there the delegation in the top right ftso.com.au and now they are delegating their flair to earn additional spark tokens and you're going to actually see this right in your wallet so this is just a high level example nonetheless i think it's very easy and this is the world of decentralized finance and guess what guys since it's decentralized these rates that they're offering you are going to be way higher than these cfi centralized finance platforms like nexo celsius blockfi so first come first served so I encourage all of us to participate in this game. Um, you can do what you want, but I will be doing whatever I can to help out and also be rewarded for it. So I'm definitely incentivized by this network. All right. Next up, we have a whale alert. No surprise. We have almost 490 million extra people. Exactly that on the move over $490 million sent 12 hours ago from an unknown wallet over to Huobi, another exchange. Very interesting. Of course, you guys can, you know, keep track of this. No surprise. At the beginning of every month, a certain amount of extra is released. Um, and yeah, you can keep track of what's sent back, etc. I'm never really worried about this, but people are always, you know, screaming, even since we're at 11 cents, that XRP is dumping, blah, blah, blah. It's in everybody's best interest to have a valuable network on um, preventing spam, etc. So um, these vo this volatility of all these assets is just part of an early network. Same thing if you go back and watch Amazon, Apple, all these assets, and you go back and read articles in the early 2000s, I laugh so hard. I watch old news interviews. These news anchors are saying, oh, we don't invest in internet stocks because they're volatile. They're just using silly jargon and buzzwords to deter the everyday average investor, realizing that the success case for these assets is absolutely unbelievable. So just wanted to point that out. And right here, Matthew L-I-N-Y, this is one of the early Ripple investors, by the way, Standard Charter, to launch Institutional Crypto Exchange. This exchange is expected to initiate service by the fourth quarter of 2021, and yet people think that crypto, now that Bitcoin pulled back and is following that wake-off um, accumulation, that they think it's over. I do not think this cryptocurrency market is done for by any means. If anything, this year was just additional validation that this is just the beginning and we are going to encounter life changing wealth. OK, so Standard Chartered kind of going over this all good and great. And also HSBC, another RippleNet partner, one of the kings in the world of transaction banking that maybe might not even like what Ripple is doing, says level the playing field. And of course, we've seen Chris Larson on their, what was it, their technological board, and he's the executive chairman of Ripple. Pretty funny. Oh, right here. Look at this. Morgan Mac. This is all you need to know. HSBC.com appoints technology advisory board. There we go. Thank you. And we have Chris Larson up there. So, yep, small world, guys, but I'm sure it's just another coincidence. And last but not least, we have right here, and this is just my opinion, sometimes the best way to shake the average retail investor out is by trending sideways for months and adding a few drops for good measure. Just like the quote of Warren Buffett, the stock market is a device which transfers money from the impatient to the patient. And I completely agree with this. If you guys have been here for several years or even just last year, you understand how quickly things can turn. When we were under 30 cents for XRP, maybe even like six months at a time, people were in never ending despair and depression. They thought it would never turn around. Um, and then I saw what was, uh, I forgot his Twitter name, his handle, because he changes it. Um, I think it's uh, Elon Trades, really cool guy. And he even goes on to say, you know, the average, the institution is happy to wait three months to make $300 million, but the average retail investor, you and I, is impatient to even wait three months to turn 10K into 50K. And it's that's the difference between our psychology. Institutions understand how we always have to feel like you have to be taking a trade or doing something actively to make money. Sometimes the best way to make money in this space is by doing nothing at all. Now, I was just goofing around right here, and as the other famous quote goes by Kevin Cage, the crypto market is a device which transfers speculative value from the insane to the insane. TM. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if this did in fact help out a little bit. Keep in mind, this is high level. We're going to be going through this specifically, and I'll probably even show you, um, maybe not my specific wallet balance, but I'd like to show you me, and I'll probably let you guys know which signal provider I leverage. And truth be told, I can actually divvy it up. I can maybe do you know, 33% uh, with one FTSO and kind of dance between them and see who gives me the most aggressive rate, who my vision aligns with, things like this. And this is, get this, one of the many ways to generate passive income. There's a lot more we're gonna be going through it, whether it's via Flare Finance or Flare Networks. So be sure to like this video, it keeps the channel going, and I will catch you in the next one.